Hackers can read and tamper with data you send online. But this is cell encrypted, making it a secret code only your browser and the website understand. Hello everyone. Today, we are going to walk you through setting up a SSL HTTPS on OpenSwall server for both HTTP and WebSockets. Securing your OpenSwall server with SSL ensures encrypted communication, enhancing the security of your data. So let's keep it short and dive right in. First, you need an SSL certificate. You can obtain one from providers like Let's Encrypt or purchase one from commercial, commercial vendors. For local development environment, which is our case, we'll first use a self-signed certificate, then we'll run one example with the MKCert tool, which generates valid certificates for local development environments. So let's first create our local SSL certificate. So for that, we need the OpenSSL command for your terminal. I'm assuming that you already have that. If you don't, you'll have to search for the necessary information to install it in your environment. So the command will be basically this one, OpenSSL, and I, I will generate the private key in order for me to do the generation of the self-signed certificate. So I basically generated the key. The next step is the certificate signing request. The certificate signing request or CSR will be the request that contains the domain protected by the certificate. So let's go ahead and add the command. All these commands will be available in the video description, uh, just in case you need it. Let's go ahead. It will prompt us with a few questions. Let's answer all of them. Here is our domain. There it is. Now I have the request CSR. Now we can generate our certificate. And this is the command that you will need. And there it is. Now we have the certificate and the key that we need in order to protect our HTTP or WebSocket server. Now we have to remember to set the proper permissions to the certificate and to the private key. For that, we will go ahead and do the siege mode 600 for the private key. And you're going to put 644 for the certificate. Now, let's take a look in our sample server. For that, I already have a sample server here ready for us. And let's take a look. Uh, we initialize our server as we did in some previous videos. Uh, notice that I changed the port here and I added the mode of the server. And as a third parameter, I added this swole soft TCP and swole SSL. These are important for the server to run SSL. Uh, and then we set some configurations to our server here. Uh, the first one, SSL cert file, which points to as a full path in our server to the certificate file, then the same thing to the key file. And then I'm allowing self-signed certificate as this is a self-signed certificate. We'll see a MK cert example later. Uh, here is an SSL verified peer, which verifies the front-end certificate. It's something else that I won't cover in this video. Uh, and then I accept an open HTTP protocol here, set to true, okay? And then all the rest is just a normal HTTP server, as you will see. Uh, I'm just printing every time we receive 
quest. Let's just put line break here at the end. So now let's run our server. Because I'm running on the port 443, I will need permission in my machine. But here it is. There it is. My server is running. Uh, before you'll be able to access your domain in your localhost, you have to first point domain to your localhost in your host file. This can change for each environment. I use Linux, so I will find my host file in this location. There it is. I already have the domain pointing to my host file. Now, here in the, in the browser, let's do yes. Did I get HP? Uh, I already have it here. There it is. Uh, it's showing not secure it's because I previously accepted uh, to access this uh, website, but this is due to the self signed condition of the certificate. Now, coming back to our terminal, let's see the MK cert case. So, first of all, let's remove the sub case that we generated previously. And now, let's generate a certificate with MK cert. Uh, there it is. Generated. Now, Let's let me just change these files. This is going to be certificate.pm. And the other one is going to be e.pm. Let's set the permissions as we did before. Now let's run our server. Now, on our browser again, let's access the same. And there it is. With MK cert, it's valid. So well, now, we are going to see the, the same example, but with WebSockets. So, I prepare one here. Uh, it's just a copy of the other service. But instead of HTTP server, it's going to use WebSocket server. As you can see in the namespace here, we replaced HTTP by a WebSocket and added frame, which is the object that carries the message back and forth. So here, I just kept the same. I changed, changed the namespace above and here, just the same. And uh, the detail that is that it is just the same because the WebSocket object in OpenSwall extends from the HTTP object which by itself extends from the TCP object, all servers. So here is uh, when the request event happens. Now I'm not, not just showing the, uh, the hello, but I'm also adding a JavaScript to run. And this JavaScript here is basically connecting to the secure WebSocket server, which is WSS instead of just WS protocol. And I'm going to keep messaging on every second uh, a message, and I will be printing ma incoming messages. Uh, as you can see here, retrieve data from server, and then the message. And that's pretty much it here. Let's see the results. So back to our browser. Back, let's connect again to our server. And by the time we got we get here, you'll be able to see the messages coming every second. So if we just refresh so we can see the connection open, here it is, the WebSocket connection and the messages coming in. So I'm consoling log and if you click here, you'll be able to see the messages coming in. There it is. This is basically the strategy to secure your open source servers.